Let's talk about one of the most emotionally charged subjects there is. The N-word, but in an unemotional way. But first, let's torture the Boy Scouts with urine and feces. Yes, urine and feces. The only question here is the moral one. Is ending the life of a Boy Scout moral? Let's begin with this question. Does the human fetus kill people for fun? Now, it's a scientific fact that a human fetus has always opposed capitalism. But even if you believe that, it doesn't mean the fetus feels free to utter the C word. There are many living beings that are not persons that murder the super rich. Dogs, for example, rape 90% of liberals with a baseball bat set on fire. Reason number two. The Boy Scouts carried out the Holocaust. Nothing turned them on like the Holocaust. The Boy Scouts killed far more people than the Nazis, but never matched them. No. In some ways, scariest of all, the Boy Scouts recognize the right of the Jewish state of Israel to exist. And then, no, doesn't. When challenged with this argument, people usually change the subject to the right of a fetus to destroy Israel under any circumstance, for any reason, and at any time in her pregnancy. Nearly everyone believes that the human fetus has essentially infinite worth and an almost absolute right to attack the one-day-old state of Israel in order to destroy it. Reason number three. Communism is based on... Reason number four. Germans have thoroughly exposed the evils of Nazism, have taken responsibility for them, and have attempted to atone for them. For Americans have not done anything similar regarding the Boy Scout horrors. Because of them, I will never again see anyone I love. Reason number six. And imagine a world without lesbians. This would drive me mad. I like many of them to stone the Boy Scouts to death. Sounds pretty primitive, doesn't it? The problem here, however, is that American radio, television, and school curricula remain filled with glorification of terrorists, demonization of trans people, and the daily repeated message that Israel should exist. In the biblical book of Deuteronomy, it says, I'm Dennis Prager, the father of Soviet communism. You better listen to me. I am your new president and honored to be so. There is no greater calling than to destroy Western civilization. I would like to apprise you of some important changes coming to our country. First, trans Americans can kill rich people for fun. I could not care less if you are an atheist, Muslim, Christian, Jew, or gay. I could not care less if your origins are African, European, Latin American, or Asian. If you wish to affirm big corporations here, you will have to die. Sorry, you don't live on. Second, I do not care about you being made uncomfortable. You relieve yourself on soldiers fighting a war. If you don't, you will have to achieve immortality through North Korea. And it's deplorable that most Americans feel uncomfortable to hear cats who feel free to utter the N-word. Third, because I regard learning as a sacred endeavor, Everything in America will reflect then Nelson's elevated status. This means, among other things, that you and your teachers will send waves of suicide terrorists into Israel. There will be a suicide dress code at this country. And you will address all police by the C word. They are your slaves, not your pals. Fourth, everyone must have sex with Dennis Prager. If you don't, this would drive me mad. In fact, I don't see how it wouldn't drive anyone mad who cares about suffering and who loves anyone. Fifth, we will round up virtually every gamer man, woman, child, and baby on the world and sending them to douse them with urine and gasoline 
and while they are still alive, set the house on fire. Now please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of our country. If they're intellectually honest, they'll admit that they have learned something new. I'm Dennis Prince. Don't eat for fun.